Ladies and gentlemen, our nation stands on the brink of an economic catastrophe. Over 85,000 longshoremen have walked off the job, shutting down 36 major ports that handle nearly half of American imports. Their demands? A jaw-dropping 77% wage increase and protection against automation. But here's the kicker. These unrealistic demands might just backfire spectacularly. We're about to show you how this strike could accelerate the very thing these workers fear most, their own obsolescence through automation. Now check this out. Are you listening? As longshoremen face automation, you may need to automate your road safety. This dash cam is like having a 24-7 port worker for your car. Recent reports show that drivers with dash cams are 60% less likely to be at fault at accidents while ports may shut down. This cam never stops working, offering collision documentation and security. With 4K Ultra HD night vision and loop recording, it's more reliable than union negotiations. Don't let your safety strike out. Visit carvisionx.com for free shipping and bonuses. Protect yourself from road disruptions even when you can't avoid economic ones. Now, there was a comment on our video yesterday about this long shoreman strike, and I replied because it it really made me think. You guys in the comments made me think about this. And I said, yeah, these guys are gonna, they're gonna like they are gonna make their jobs obsolete. I mean, you think about it. If they automate all the ports, and I got some video from China. Wait till you see what they do in China. If they automate all these ports, they don't need all these longshoremen. They don't need to deal with uh, union strikes, uh, insurance, uh, all the things that go along with, with having employees. This guy said longshoremen will strike themselves out of jobs. I've seen it happen before. They cannot expect their wages and benefits to exceed or even equal re equal revenue, but those union bosses will be sitting pretty at the end of this mess. They'll be counting money while they're out of a job. They will be replaced by automation faster due to this. Demanding a 100% raise is unrealistic. They turned down a 50% pay raise and are looking for 70% plus and a guarantee against automation. The strike will only push these logistics companies to more quickly implement automation and AI. These are far from the first jobs that will be lost to automation. I think they should automate all of it while they're in strike. Automation brings skilled jobs too, just different skills. Also, there's something else going on that is being covered up as Houston Port has been cleared out for weeks and they just did the strike. Now, take a look. This is what's going on. This is China. The members likely have no idea that their union leaders are 100% in with the foreign dock owners. Workers are striking. Workers are complaining. And the dock owners are laughing and smiling. They know the dock workers' days are numbered. Meet their replacements. Watch this. Look at this. Brian, go vertical. Look at this. This is. There's no one driving that thing. There's no one driving it. This is 100% automation on the ports. This is how China does it. And, I mean, don't you think that these companies would rather have a couple guys in a room pushing buttons, like remote control, video games, rather than dealing with people who are asking for uh, insane wages? Look at this. Look at them. There they are. Look at the controllers. They're controlling it all remotely. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to see any American workers be put out of, out of a job. The devastation of having 85,000 people out of work in this country is not something that we, that we want to see. But this is the progress of... That we're look that's on the horizon. Right there. Now, Patrick Bet David, if you don't follow this guy, you do need to do that. And uh he just put out this video. Before I get to that, 
The border czar Kamala Harris getting an early start on creating bread lines. October surprise Kamala Harris embraces sh- embraces striking port workers, owns any resulting economic damage. So Kamala Harris is on the side of the unions. And we'll play the threat that was presented that says we're going to have massive supply chain disruptions. Your holidays are going to be screwed. And Kamala Harris is embracing that. Now let's listen to what uh, Patrick but David has to say here. About inflation, here's another event that could cause prices to go up. And what that is, is the East Coast port strike. First time ever, possibly since 1977. We're talking about an association with 85,000 members, the International Longshoremen's Association. This is the North American's largest longshoremen's reunion about to strike after midnight tonight. I'm shooting it on Monday tonight. Let me tell you why this is important to you. Here's what they're asking for. Of these 85,000 members, roughly 45,000 of the workers are involved. They're asking for for a 77% raise for the next six years. This is 36 ports, roughly 43% of all U.S. imports pass through these ports. This is the first time they may be going through a strike since 1977, and they're worried because automation could lead to job reductions by 15 to 30%, and you should know about this. You know why? Here's a number for you. Watch this. Port of New York and New Jersey handles $240 billion of annual goods. A strike just in one of these ports could cost $641 million in one of the ports. The one in Virginia could cost $600 million a day. We're going to talk about that today. If you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so why are they doing this? So the East Coast workers are saying, look, why don't you match our salary with the West Coast workers? They work 40 hours a week. You pay them $116,000 a year, but you're paying us only $81,000. I'm not sure what's going on with this today. Um, Kamala's going to own this. They're going to strike themselves out of jobs. Here is the longshoreman talking about crippling the United States. And my men hit- Let me explain something to you. These people today don't know what a strike is. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week. Be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers, get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me, I'm putting a Taft Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taft Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are gonna go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money, to pay their salaries. Well, they went from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down, and let's get a contract, and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you, and you have no idea what that means. No. I will cripple you, he says. That's a threat. And again, Kamala Harris is embracing that. Randy Quaid, he posted that the October surprise is the longshoremen are going to rightfully F this loser president and his mentally challenged VP in favor of American jobs. Listen to this guy. Jobs, good pay. These maritime industries, they come into America 
They they come from over there into America, into America, and they want to automate everything and eliminate uh, American jobs, good paying jobs that support families, and and they have a medical, and they have a, annuities, and they have pensions, and we have a president who 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 is is he's not on our side. He he's not for us. He where is he? No, I am going to show the world that I, that we can shut down uh, the world. We'll shut the whole world down. <laughs> Cousin Eddie, let him have it. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg also weighing in. Um, okay, there was also this report that Protests near the main entrance of to the port of Baltimore turned violent. We start the top of the hour this morning with a Fox 5 News alert. Thousands of dock workers are on strike, causing ports across the U.S. to close. Yeah, in total, 36 ports shutting down, including the port of Baltimore. Melanie Allenwick is there right now live, and she appears uh, to be telling us since this morning that it's been heating up there, and it hasn't been a, a, a pleasant sight for many folks, especially the drivers coming in. Uh, that's right. So for some people, I think it might have been a bit of a surprise. However, this has been in the news that it could be happening uh, for, for a few weeks now. So uh, you can see the picket lines behind me here. And this is the main entrance to the port of Baltimore, the Dundalk Terminal. And you'll see they're, they're walking around the picket lines in circles. Now, uh, Baltimore police were here earlier reminding the picketers that they cannot block the entrance to the port. The longshoremen walked off the job at 12.01 a.m. There was confusion and anger as picketers initially tried to stop trucks from entering and it did turn violent. I come here for seven years. I've pulled the um, trash and the debris out of here for the uh, for the port of Baltimore and um, the officer told me to um, come back and make um, go in there to get out of my way and they attacked me and broke the windshield and, and, and serrated my face. Look at it. Now, we don't know exactly what happened. The union members said the truck hit one of the picketers as they swarmed around it. We did see an ambulance come to assist, and we know that uh, uh, that gentleman did speak with police officers. Again, we'll, we'll let the uh, authorities sort out exactly what happened there. Now, 45 members of the International Longshoremen's Association, I'm sorry, 45,000 members. That's a big difference in the number, isn't it? Uh, they have all been asking for a 77 percent pay increase over six years. And Pete Buttigieg says uh, they want your share of record profits companies are making. Here, the uh, acting labor. I do want to start with the port and specifically, why is the president not stepping in on this, especially since you did take actions to step in with the rail negotiations less than two years ago? Well, the administration, to be clear, has been very active here. The uh, acting labor, labor secretary has been engaging the parties, uh, so has the White House, and, and so have I. What the president won't do is uh, reach for the, the Taft-Hartley Act because he believes that the right outcome is going to come from the collective bargaining process. Uh, that's something that uh, has uh, produced results again and again, not just for workers, but for our economy. I, I think one thing that's really important is you see the historic contracts that have been reached by the United Auto Workers, for example, uh, and other players, uh, you know, uh, we've seen historic wage increases and in benefits for workers and simultaneously historic profitability for companies. In other words, it's showing that you can do right by workers and have a lot of growth uh, in those firms and in those industries. That's definitely, definitely something that the economics would support here. Uh, over about a 10-year period, uh, we've seen the, the uh, ocean carriers who uh, uh, really control the, uh, the, the business side, so to speak, of this negotiation. We've seen their profitability go up by about 350%. Over that same period, uh, we've seen the wages go up by about 15%. So the workers are seeking to participate in that. We actually think the parties economically are not as far apart from each other as they may think. Uh, but at <laughs> the end of the day, they're the ones who need to get to the table, work it out, reach a deal, and get those ports back open. It's so this longshoreman strike is more than just a labor dispute. It's a ticking time bomb for our economy.
While union leaders make outrageous demands, companies are eyeing automation as a long-term solution to avoid future disruptions. The irony is palpable. In fighting against progress, these workers may be hastening their own replacement. And where's Kamala Harris on all this? She's cheering on the very actions that could cripple our supply chain and drive up costs for every American. So now we want to hear from you. How do you think this port strike will affect your daily life? And do you believe that automation is inevitable in this industry? Comment below.